Hi, this is Heidi Gaiman at ILoveMyShepherd.com with Chasing Freedom video number five. This video is entitled, What is Freedom? And it really centers around our theme verse, Galatians 5, 1. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. So we'll really focus on that verse today, but we'll do it in three parts. Number one, God values freedom for freedom's sake. We are created for freedom, and we are also recreated for freedom, for freedom in this life. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, when do you feel the most free? We're going to talk about feeling and experiences for a minute. What in life makes you feel really free? Uh, anything from maybe a season in your life, a time in your life that you remember feeling really free, or a part of your day that makes you feel really free, or um, how about uh, an action? Uh, I think about whenever I can sit down with my cup of coffee and just sit, and there's no time frame. Like, it's not like I need to be somewhere at nine o'clock, but when I get that chance to just sit with my coffee, then I feel really free. It's, I don't know what it is. It's just the activity of like holding that mug and no time limits. Um, how about when I was a young adult, and I know for you young adults, not it doesn't always feel like this, and especially in that season, but now that I can look back on my young adulthood, when I traveled to Europe uh, before college, when I was able to kind of only make decisions for myself that didn't affect little people, uh, my children and my spouse and a whole congregation and all of that stuff. Um, when I just was doing life and letting God kind of open doors for me and stuff in young adulthood, that really felt like freedom. And it had its own problems and struggles, don't get me wrong, but I can look back on that and be like, wow, that, that was free. I think we can probably find something in every season of life that's freeing. Uh, for instance, now at the age of 38, I care much less for people's opinions, right? I'm not so wrapped up in what people think of me. And so that's very freeing for me as I enter closer to 40, Ooh, right? So what? tell me some of yours. Show me in the comments what are things that make you feel free in this life. We're going to talk about today how freedom just is and how it also is an action. It's a verb. And so we'll get into that. Let's look at a few translations of Galatians 5.1 to get started. First, our theme verse in the ESV, which is what I usually use on the blog and stuff, the English Standard Version of the Bible, is for freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. That's the ESV. The NIV says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm them and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. The NASB, which is New American Standard Bible says, it was, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not subject again to a yoke of slavery. I like that word subject. You see how these are visual images like the burden of the yoke of slavery is one thing. This being subject to the yoke of slavery, which means like we bow our head or our knee to it. We're like under its rule. And then um, I think the King James is kind of cool too. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. How cool is that? There's so much in that. Uh, be not entangled then. You can feel that entanglement. I think about, especially that makes me think of sin and the verse where we're running the race and it says not to get you know, entangled with sin as we run the race. Uh, but how can all the burdens of life, how can uh, the yokes that we put on ourselves of expectations and that we let others people put on us, uh, the the legalism we talked about last week and the hedonism of like wanting fun and entertainment and something better all the time, as well as regulation and rules and just a one right way. Uh, how do those things entangle us? Think about those words. How do those things burden us? How do those things subject us to their way? How do we follow them in one way? Kind of think about that. Maybe that's something else to throw up in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. 
I feel, one of the times that I feel the most spiritually free is when I'm worshiping, whether it is through the power of music and the hymn and just a big, loud organ that fills this space, or whether it's through praise. And, you know, I like to um, reach my hands out sometimes so that, you know, I'm just receiving from God in his service to me, in in his um word receiving from him in so many ways forgiveness and absolution and gosh there's just so much that he gives us and i think i feel really free in that so i want us to be able to take those opportunities i want us to be able to shout them out and recognize them that makes me feel free that helps me remember and stand in my freedom remember the the verse says stand firm then um in the freedom that we have. However, we also want to talk about freedom that just is. And I'll show you why. Let's go with, first of all, God values freedom. I think in our culture, we can often uh, forget about freedom. In the American culture, I should say. Probably some of you are watching from other countries and you might relate to this kind of American freedom. Maybe you have just real like just freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of music, freedom of whatever in your place and time. Other people don't. Uh, other people are very aware that they are not free in their culture, in their space, that they're not free to say what they think, uh, that there's at least uh, consequences, whether they're really obvious or not really obvious, that they have to be more careful. But I think in my situation, at least, in America today, in 2017, I know that um, I am free, but I forget it all the time. It's just, it is what it is, right? It's a state of freedom. Well, that helps us point to a little bit and helps us look at the way that freedom works for us scripturally. So if we look at Galatians 5.1, it repeats freedom twice. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. The first is a noun. In Greek, it's eleutheria. eleutheria. And I'll put a link in the show notes so you can look it up on BibleHub.com to hear a little bit more. But it means freedom, liberty, a state of freedom from slavery. So there's two important things in that. One, it's a state of being. It just is. We are free because of what Christ has done for us, because he died and he rose. We are free. Um, it's a beautiful thing that we cannot affect. No matter what we do, we will be free. If someone tries to take our freedom, we're still free. If someone locks us in prison for our faith, for whatever unjust act, still free, right? If our marriages fall apart, still free. Uh, this is an important thing. Through Christ, freedom is. It just is. Uh, also, from slavery. So that means we were coming from something. God delivered us from slavery. At one time, we knew the burden. And don't we still feel that? Don't we still feel that weight of slavery when we kind of forget? We forget our freedom. Um, and then also because the devil would just kind of like throw some stuff on our back. And we just have to be real honest about that. We're going to feel the weight, but we can proclaim freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ. We are free. Let's look at a few verses that tell us a little bit more what that freedom looks like. 1 Corinthians 10, 29 is the first one. 1 Corinthians 10, 29. Some of these verses you'll have heard before in other studies uh, that we've done in the weeks one through four, but this is kind of cool. Um, this one's a little bit different. I'm going to read 28 and 29 just to make it real clear. But if someone says to you, this has been offered in sacrifice, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for the sake of consciousness, the sake of conscience. I do not mean your conscience, but his. For why should my liberty be determined by someone else's conscience? This tells us a few things. First of all, we need to be worried about each other's freedom. We are going to uh, do things within the body of Christ that help someone else see their freedom, that helps proclaim freedom to other people. We might do things and we might also avoid doing things in order for people to see their freedom. That's gonna affect how we decide how to do worship. It's gonna affect the way that we um, create Bible studies. I think of even really 
seemingly small things, but like, do we offer childcare so that every woman in the congregation has the opportunity to study the word? Do we let babies come into ch to the Bible study if the mama wants to, so that they can hear the word um, in a place that makes them feel comfortable? Do we uh, create opportunities for the oldest members, maybe the shut-ins, the homebound, in order to hear the word and be part of this group of women that gather. Those kind of things, that's how we help proclaim freedom into spaces. I need to be also worried about everyone around me, not in a way that it's like, oh, the burden, the worry. No, because that's submitting to the yoke. Instead, just knowing and being conscious of the fact that we are doing this life together and we're going to help release that bondage with each other by pointing out, oh, we have freedom in this. We have freedom to do this. We have freedom to walk outside this church and do this Bible study somewhere else if we need to. We have freedom to have childcare if we want because freedom in Christ, we can do some things different. Uh, you know, just stuff like that. Um, and maybe you have some examples. I'd love to hear them. Please throw them up there. And then also, our liberty is not determined by someone else. So if someone else doesn't like what we're doing, it's up to us as to whether this is about God or man. And sometimes in our freedom in Christ, we decide to make man happy. <laughs> we decide to be a peacemaker. We decide to do something different to help that person draw near to the word. But at other times we say, my liberty, this is between me and God, and I'm gonna do it differently than you would like. That's also our freedom in Christ. And understanding that we do both in ministry, in church life, in relationships is really important. So then let's go to 2 Corinthians 3.17. I know you've heard this. We just went over it last week. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Oh my goodness, it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? There is freedom. Thayer's Greek lexicon says about this, freedom from the dominion of corrupt desires. So because Christ has died and rose and I am baptized, I have the Holy Spirit in my person, I am not wrapped up, entangled, as it were, in the King James, uh, by this corruption that you know, is really a burden that they don't even know, but a burden to those who don't know Christ. I don't have that. Instead, it says, so that we do by the free impulse of the soul, um, that what the will of God requires. We have this free impulse that is called the Holy Spirit inside of us. And just, we have the ability to pray for God to just fill us and let that impulse go out, that God would do his work in us and through us and around us. I just love the language of the free impulse of the soul. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Let's proclaim that to each other then too. And then Romans 8, 21. Let's look at that. Romans 8, 21. I'm going to go ahead and read 20 also to make it clear. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. This is important that the state of freedom concerns all of creation. Uh, we'll get into like free will and stuff in a little bit and just like actual creation. But know that this passage tells us that the entire creation, rocks, mountains, valleys, um, lizards, uh, clouds, all of it is concerned about freedom because God subjected it to bondage, to death, so that we could be freed. He created or he um, allowed this really difficult thing that we call death and we know as loss in us only so that hope could come. God has a bigger, grander plan in freedom than just you and I. And I think that's important that we remember that. It is for freedom Christ has set us free. Also means it's for freedom itself. He values freedom. He values freedom for us for um, the people around us. He values freedom for rocks. He values freedom for uh, from like natural disasters. He wants the earth to come together in the new creation when he comes again in perfection. We are all waiting to be set free 
from the bondage of kind of the here and now reality of life with sin in our world. Uh, so God values that freedom and he has a plan for it. And that's an important thing. Then also in Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom Christ has set us free, tells us that we, it, a verb, right? It is for freedom, the state of being that is freedom that won't change in us, that Christ has set us free. We are free from bondage. We are free from being held liable. Or I like this, it's not our responsibility. We are free from being held responsible. And that's that ongoing freedom that we're chasing, that we want to experience each day. We want more of in our life. That God has, um, he's working in his spirit constantly in us. I think that double language of both being free I'm done chasing freedom. It's already here for me, right? Helps us to move forward to the free, that we get to have freedom each day, and that we need to remind each other, you're free, you're free, and help proclaim that freedom in each other's lives. And we'll start to see, I think as we study it, and one reason we're studying it today, is we start to see more of it in our life and where it is and places and spaces, and help also like pull that burden, that yoke off of one another sometimes uh, to say, you don't need that. You don't need that. Instead, we're free. We're free together in Christ. Okay, so the next two parts, we are created free and we are recreated free for a life of freedom. So created free. We are created with free will. This is difficult theology. Are you ready? People really want to know why is there sin? Why did God allow sin in the world? Was free will really worth it? And I'm going to tell you yes. The more we study God in scripture, the reason, one of the primary reasons we come to the word is to find out who God is. And I want to tell you this idea that he values freedom is so important. He created us free, that we are not robots. We are not uh, people who automatically bow the knee to him. Even Satan did not automatically bow to to the Trinity, to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Instead, what happened? He fell, right? He made his own horrible choices and brought sin into the world through his actions and through Adam and Eve. So is it worth it? I would say, and I there's a lot of difficult answers here, and there's no clear cut. We will not know on this side of heaven why free will, right? Uh, but I do think we can answer that God values people. He values us more. At I Love My Shepherd, we have a core value, people matter more. And that's because I think that's how God feels. He will always choose people and real relationship with people before he chooses something else, even when that's the harder choice, even when that's more difficult for him. There's a couple quotes from Dietrich Bonhoeffer that I want to share with you. Uh, Bonhoeffer was in prison uh, during World War II for his faith and for speaking out against the Nazis in Germany. Uh, I think it's cool how he, in prison, I think he probably understands the idea of freedom a little bit different than we do, right? He maybe appreciates it and is able to identify it more than, like I said, sometimes we just take it for granted. It just is. Freedom just is in our lives. So maybe we have a hard time identifying it where it really is. Um, he says, in Jesus, we have come to know the kindliness of the Father. When we were in sin, when we did not know God, Jesus, God, did not love us less. He loves us. He loved us in that creation, in our free will, in our yucky decisions. He still loves us. But we get to know him and to know his kindliness. I love that. His grace, his mercy, his freedom in Christ and only in Christ. If you are not feeling free, uh, that just might be the yoke of the burden of life, right? But it, you have to ask yourself, is it because I don't know Jesus? If you're listening and you don't know Jesus, if you haven't been baptized or if Jesus hasn't been introduced to you, just know that he is waiting. He's ready. He's been looking for you this whole time. He knows you're there and he's been reaching out. And so we can know a kind God, a loving God through Christ, through Christ and his freedom. Without Jesus, it is true, we cannot know or see the kindness of God in the midst of junk. The junk of life will always get in the way of us even seeing God sometimes. And so knowing that we have Christ, when you're baptized, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And so it sees Christ when we are having a hard time swimming through the junk. And that is also freedom. 
It lets grace in. It shows us that freedom is part of the grander plan. Another uh, Bonhoeffer quote from uh, Papers from Prison is, May God give faith to us daily, and I do not mean the faith which flees the world, but the one that endures the world, and which loves and remains true to the world in spite of all the suffering which it contains for us. Our marriage shall be a yes to God's earth. It shall strengthen our courage to act and accomplish something on the earth. I fear that Christians who stand with only one leg on the earth also stand with only one leg in heaven. I think this is a really important point that God, that burden, that yoke is not always the junk of life. Sometimes we, no, all the time, actually in Christ, we stand free in the midst of the junk, in the midst of the world. We do not desire to be taken out of this world because Jesus himself says in John that he's put us in this world for a purpose and he's given us the word of truth to sanctify us in this world. And we're put here for a reason. Yes, we know our loved ones that are in heaven already. They are completely free in a way that we can't understand. But let us not wish away the days, I guess, that God puts us on this earth that we can just really live out freedom. I think Bonhoeffer sitting in prison can be trusted with the difficulty that is life. He understands the difficulty that is life. And the Apostle Paul is the same. Himself, sitting in prison, writing these letters to the churches and sh proclaiming freedom in the midst of darkness is one way that God uses to teach us that freedom is, always has been in Christ, and always will be in Christ, and he also is working it in our lives, in our day. So... Let's talk about recreated free, right? Life of freedom. Did you know that there's 14 references to the Holy Spirit in Galatians? I think this is such a cool thing. That tells us the Holy Spirit is intimately connected with freedom. And we have that 2 Corinthians 3.17 to also just remember that and proclaim it. Um, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Both of Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Um, we're going to look at another passage that tells us a little bit more about Jesus and freedom again. You've heard it before. We're going to hear it again. But the Spirit is the one who works that secondary freedom in us, that removing of the burden and the yokes that we would submit ourselves to, um, the legalism, the hedonism, all those things we talked about last week. The Spirit is the secret weapon to freedom. He's a secret weapon to freedom. And we just like... We just want to let him work. Uh, sometimes the scripture talks about that we can just quench the spirit. We just like tamp it down. Just let that spirit out and pray. That's going to be your challenge this week is praying, Lord, let freedom be. Just let freedom work in my life. And we're just going to pray some freedom into our lives every day. And yes, is God working anyway? Yeah. But when we invite him in, wow, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. There's freedom in being able to communicate with our Savior daily. The Spirit fights the good fight for us and in us against the evil and the principalities and all that junk in our world and also um, in ourselves. He fights against it. The Spirit, where he resides, evil cannot. And so God is at work in the Spirit when we don't even know it. But the Spirit also fills our hearts and our minds. Um, when we read the Word, we're just turning to freedom, turning to freedom again and again. And the Spirit is going to work that fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control. And remember, those things also, if you listen to the podcast this week and stuff, those just are. We have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. It's not like you get a different measure than I get. Uh, but at the same time, the Spirit is working them out in different ways in each of us. And we can ask, we can ask, show me this here. Help me have it and see it over here. That's such a blessing from God. So then last is John 8, 32. And we just, we don't, we don't want to end without reading this passage. I think it's just such an insight into where freedom comes from um, and what God is doing in our lives. I'm going to read 31 again, just to keep it clear. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then we're going to go to 36. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. 
So in our lesson alone, we have three things that just really work freedom into our lives. We have the word, and boy, is that ready and available for us. Let's just seek it out and search it and be hungry and desperate for it each day. And then the truth, the word of truth. So we can't have um, we can't have God apart from the truth. Truth matters. It's important. But then also, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus did it all. He's won it all. He is it all. He values freedom. He is freedom. God is just wrapped up and around and through and in freedom. And that is such a blessing for us. So like I said, this week, your challenge is to pray it up. Pray every day. I, I want five minutes of prayer, okay? Five minutes of prayer. Can you do it? Uh, just about freedom. And let whatever come out, right? Just ask God, maybe use one of the scripture references from today's study as a guide. It's always good to pray with scripture. Um, just helps us keep it clear, right, between us and God. We know he's already talking through his word, so why not use it? Maybe create a Bible journaling page, uh, a post-it note, whatever you need to do. Uh, but pray five minutes each day this week just for God to show you his freedom to uh, help us to encourage someone else in freedom and show it to them as well. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.